Hey guys, Chris Tillman Family Farms. Um, it's been a while since we've just done a hey what you doing type video, so that's what we're going to do right now. Um, got a lot of things that have been going on around here. Uh, there was a spring break camp for some kids here not too long ago. Jamie did that. Uh, we have ventured down a, another uh, road that my son has chosen to do. Um, since we had all the problems with broiler chickens and, and Georgia Department of Agriculture and, and processing facilities and all that kind of stuff, we're missing that in our farm business. So um, my son suggested that we try to sell lamb. That is a very, very, very niche market, um, but we are gonna try it. So we've bought four, uh, we bought one, and then we bought three from a farm yesterday. So. I'm going to show you those guys here in just a minute. The three are still in quarantine. Uh, we don't want to just throw them in just all of a sudden. So I'm going to show you those guys. Uh, tons and tons of chickens around here. Uh, pig sets are moving. The cows are finally moving on pasture from spot to spot. That's been a little bit of a struggle. Um, somebody asked about the barn project out there. Uh, so I'll show you where we're at on that. But um, just a lot of stuff going on. So uh, I'm just going to take you with me today. Y'all hang out. All right, these are the three that we picked up yesterday. Uh, these are Katahdin. Uh, they are a hair sheep. Uh, they were in really, really good shape. We, we checked their eyes and all that stuff before we ever brought them to the truck. Um, and we're excited about them. They're going to be in this pen right here for probably five days or so. Um, and we will combine them with the sheep and the three goats that we're running in netting. And I'll take you over there and show you those guys here in just a second. But um, it was funny because Jamie has named these animals in a funny way, not a not in a I love you way, but in a funny way. So the first one was Leroy and now she's named these uh, Larry, Curly and Mo. So we'll see. Uh, about uh, two and a half, three months old, I think is what they told us. So um, let's go over here and check out the goats and the other sheep. And I'll show you where we've been running them. So this area that you're looking at right here behind the shed and up there where that dog house is and all that stuff, that's where the goats and the sheep uh, started off. And then we moved them down. We got these big chain link panels. We moved them down into here. And then where I'm backing up to, against this fence uh, is there's a lot of clover that grows right here. This is just the end of our garden. So we had put up netting right here. And then before I ran the hair over the garden area here, all of this was ground cover and weedy and all that stuff. So the goats and the one sheep got this whole area and we've just kind of inched them along. And now, they are up around the uh, that big cedar tree there and you can tell so this right here was the leftover mustard greens and they really really got after those and then this spot over here was the leftover collard greens and they really really got after them they went to town on these weeds right here and they are still just go into town. So that, that little baby right there was born here a couple weeks back. And there's Leroy, the sheep up there. But they've cleaned up underneath this tree. The netting goes on around that way. Um, I'll show you the area where we're planning on moving them to. So this whole area right here, I get up against the pond is um, pretty weedy we actually had some uh some garden stuff growing there last year i think we did some uh extra tomato plants down there some okra and um i think we had some onions and garlic planted down there but anyhow i have not cut it since the fall and uh you see how how kind of tall and overgrown it is so it's just across the pathway from where the garden is and where they ran there so they'll move into this area and then hopefully from here they're just going to continue. We'll, we'll have the other sheep added in from there, and then they're just going to continue into the yard. So we have, oh gosh, if I had to say this backyard area, we're going to move all these trailers and stuff, but this backyard area back here 
has got to be over an acre. So we're gonna be trying to use this area to run the sheep and goats. I'm, I'm not sure if the goats are gonna have enough out here. They don't graze grass as much as sheep do, but I think that this is gonna be great for the sheep. Um, so over the next couple of days, I'm gonna be moving trailers and getting all this stuff going. And well, hey, little sheep. <laughs> so that's the plan for these guys. So let's talk about chickens for a minute. And I wanna show y'all something. So we got the egg mobile put back out here and we had the netting in one spot. We had the horses in a different pasture across the pond over here. Well, that was getting a little, a little peaked over there. So we decided to bring them back over here, run in the same pasture with the chickens. And what I'm about to show you is an area that the netting was in and the birds had eaten so much of it and they weren't gonna eat much more of it. So when we moved the horses over here, you see all that manure? That is how interested they were in this grass over here and how tasty it was to them. They spent that kind of time over here eating that grass down. So now all they've done is just given us more fertilizer. We've got a, a drag that we drag in this pasture. This is pasture is a little bit small. It's probably oh, three and a half, four acres maybe. Um, but we'll drag this and then we'll move the horses back across the other side of the pond. And uh, this stuff is just gonna help this grass even more. But let's go check out that egg mobile and all the chickens and uh, I'll show you what we did to the egg mobile. So we got one thing left to do to it, actually two things. Um, but we wanted to get it back in service and get these birds back in it. All right, so here's the winter hacienda. This is our little bit bigger but miniature range coop that we took a nesting box and set up in there. And we had light in there. We had a makeshift roost in there with some pallets. And then we just had netting out. Well, recently we moved the Eggmobile back into the picture. Um, so it's been back in here. It had been cleaned up, painted. <coughs> um, the nesting box that's in this old range coop is gonna go on the wall inside. We had a, a, a viewer suggest that and I had not wanted to do that. And the more I thought about it, I figured I would give it a try again. So we're not gonna put it on the outside like I originally talked about. Um, and then I think the only other thing that we'll do to it, once we get it moving out in the field, it's not so bad now because it's not very hot, but um, we're gonna put a roof on the side that'll do this number with a, with a kickstand so that we can move it in and out of gates and things like that, but it'll give them more shade during the hot part of the day. Um, and then I've got a roost on the inside of the trampoline chicken coop that is gonna probably go inside there or it'll go on the side of it under that lean-to roof so there'll be more roost area for them. So, but the egg mobile is painted up all cute. Everybody from the road is gonna know what we're doing. That's a, a neat thing for us. We're on a main highway and our pasture uh, is out there on that road. So it turns out pretty good. But this is three sets of netting. Um, we're going to order one more set of netting so that we can come out of three sets and move directly into three sets. We're going to start moving chickens like we moved the pigs. So out of a set into a set so that we don't have to lock up close to 300 birds in that. And obviously this is not all the birds, but we'll walk around here and look at the other ones. So this are the egg replacement birds that we've been talking about all winter. We did chick videos in the brooder of them earlier in the year. Actually, I think we got these guys in November, I think. So anyhow, over this weekend, all of these birds are gonna go in with those birds and uh, they'll all start moving together. The older birds are gonna teach them about the nesting boxes and hopefully everybody will start spitting out eggs here very soon. So I'm gonna walk you guys out here and show you uh, one of our feeder groups of 10. They will go to the butcher the second week of May. Um, I think today is April 22nd, maybe. Um, but I'm gonna give you a, a quick scenario of where they've been, where they're going, and uh, how we're gonna get them out of here and 
loaded up to go to the butcher but i'm going to show you the progression of where they've been and what's grown back so far and all that stuff and i didn't overseed any of these so everything you're about to see is all just natural regrowth from them disturbing the seed bank so the training pen that these guys started in was down there this hillside right here you can see the line really really clear up on the top part of this hillside it didn't grow back much at all um it's pretty hard ground up there and on of course that's where we would come to them so they beat that down packed it down pretty hard so i gotta do a little work there to get something growing but you see everything else down through there all that stuff has grown back on its own you can see the next line right there as to where the pin stopped and then they moved over into this pin to where all of this has grown back and then if you look beyond that up into the trees you can see where the next pin was so there was one, two, three, four, five, six. I think they're in their seventh pen right now. Let's walk out there and check them out. We're gonna sneak up and see if we can't catch them still napping. They are uh, still being a little lazy this morning. Wakey, wakey, piggies. <laughs> so there's 10 in this group. Um, and they'll go in a couple of weeks. They will be bumping 280, 300 pounds um, by the time they go. So this is uh, the first litter from our uh, girl Beth she had 13 and all 13 lived we sold three of those and kept 10 for this feeder group so uh, we'll go out and visit the other feeder group here in just a minute all right so the barn update um, one side of the roof is completely coated the other side has just the cap coated um, there's a story behind this as to why it's not done yet, but um, it's uh, it's a daunting task. On top of that, the stuff that I was using on the roof actually made me sick, like really sick. Like I thought we were having about to go to the hospital sick. So um, let me show you what it looks like right this minute. All right, there you have it. That is this side. The, uh, the tin has not been, it has not had the rust converse sprayed on it and it has not been coated the other side is going to be a dramatic difference from that but this stuff has aluminum in it and with as closely as i was working with it and big dummy didn't read the the barrel like i should have um, i ended up with uh, metal fume inhalation fever and got really sick bad fever shaking couldn't break it and i felt like dog crap for about three days so but the other side looks really good. Let's go look at it. So this is the other side. And yes, it's night and day difference. Looks great. I think the product's done great. We've had a lot of rain and things like that since I got this side finished. It's held up really well thus far. Um, so I'm excited to get the other side done and then we can start walling up the barn and doing a couple other things there. But um, I would definitely recommend both of those products at this point. We'll see how it does over long term, but it's looking good, it's coming along. It's just slow like everything else around here. So this is another something else that we're doing. Um, these are not meat rabbits, but these guys are breeder bunnies. Um, Holland Lops, uh, I, they're, some of them are mixes like this guy's lion head mix and a couple other things. But um, we noticed that there's a pretty good um, demand for bunnies around here. So. Jamie's not really into slaughtering rabbits, so we are going to do meat rabbits. There's a whole nother building over there that has a bunch of females in it that are bred. So we'll see how that turns out. This is a temporary setup. I've got an old rabbit hutch that I built down at our old place that's down in the old barn that's on the wall. I'm gonna bring it up here and put it in this building. This is also our brooder, but I gotta get all this stuff off the ground so that it can continue to be a brooder. But 
So kind of a racking house, kind of, um, but not, not as much as what one would think with meat rabbits. So that's going on in the trampoline chicken coop brooder. That old nesting box will come out. This roost is going to go to the uh, egg mobile. So that's what's going on in here right now. So over in our farrowing pen, we've got a couple of girls that are bred that should be coming along in, in, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, this is Lila, I think. Sometimes I get the spotted ones mixed up. We got Lila and Beth uh, and then Gertrude and Fiona are in here. They are all bred. Fiona and Beth should be the first two within the first or second week of May, if I did the math right. But the rest of them are still being lazy up there in the, the little pig hut. So we'll be starting a piglet watch video here for too long. All right, so I gotta show you these garden boxes, okay? So if you follow our Facebook page, you will see. So Jamie had a, uh, a uh, spring break camp out here for kids. She had six or eight kids out here. And these garden boxes were part of the project. So there's all sorts of stuff planted in here. These are lettuces, um, garlic. These are potatoes over here that are just gonna blow up and overrun this bed. <laughs> um, they got some kale over there. Uh, this one, I think, actually, some of those have spinach planted in them that's popping out. There you go. A little update for all the camp kitties. Um, and then over here, I think this is a lot of onions and this little area here, I'm not sure what ended up there, but, um, she did say that this bed was a little bit unsupervised, so she's not sure if there's anything planted right there. <laughs> so but anyhow, this was a really neat something for her to do. And we've got three summer camps lined up for the summer. Uh, if you want to see information on those, you can go to our Facebook page. So we started moving the cows. Um, we we spent the winter all out in those woods out there and just a little bit of pasture. And we have pounded these guys with hay and uh, the hay didn't seem to be enough. So we went against what we normally would do and ended up buying a super sack of feed and fed them 75 pounds a day for 26 days. And I kept getting so many people that tell me to stop playing around and start moving these cows. The pasture had not recovered as much as what we would have liked it to this spring because we have just overgrazed it, stripped it, and not put anything back into it. So if you can see, that line is right there all the way back over to the other side. We uh, went through all of that last week. We learned that our paddock sizes with this much forage on the ground were not enough. So this is about as much as we would have done in three days for these guys. Um, some of these cows have become to be very, very hard keepers. So we've made some decisions that when they get moved around to our working set that some of these guys are gonna go, they just don't fit the bill. Um, and this, this is a very sweet guy, he's a bull. <clears throat> but, um, trying to get them to help us improve this pasture. They dropped a lot of manure up in those uh, sections up there against the road. So I'm gonna drag that out. We've got some rains coming. Hopefully it's gonna start putting that on. But then as you can see, we still have a lot of pasture to rotate through. And it even goes back way back up this way. There's a pasture in the back, it's about five acres. So hopefully uh, by the time we get moved back around, this grass is gonna be coming alive with the manure we're dropping back on it and all that kind of stuff. All right, so we're out here with the, uh, the other group of 10 that's out in the pasture. Um, the old farm builder uh, bulk feeder is working good. I got a few issues with it when it rains. Um, 
and, and, and I actually sent Jordan some messages and he said that it has to rain pretty hard for his to, to get messed up. So maybe that's what it was for us. I don't know. Uh, but I am contemplating trying to come up with some um, alterations to it to see if I can't hold some of the, the rain water out of it without it being this big conspicuous something. So uh, going to be working on that. Uh, but this group out here is growing really well. They're about two months behind the, the group we looked at a few minutes ago. But um, I want to show you this grass over here that's starting to come back. They muddied it up a little bit, so we're going to get some seed and over uh, uh, overseed these areas. But, man, they've been off of this stuff for a week. And I want to show you what the, the regrowth is on it already. And they were on this all winter long, so check this out. So... I mean, we're not talking super tall, but man, all the areas that are popping back out, this was almost dirt a week ago. So it's uh, it's gonna be coming back pretty old good. We're excited about this. Hopefully it's gonna be a, a big deal for this pasture and the revitalization of the soil and all kinds of stuff like that. So hopefully we get there or they're overseeded and uh, keep them off of this for another month or two we'll have a pretty good stand of grass out here guys i almost forgot to close this one down um got caught up in some family fun yesterday afternoon but um as always we appreciate you guys watching we have seen a lot of new subscribers thank you for stopping by thank you for subscribing we hope that you enjoy we hope that you learn a little something but um this video is just a little catch up something on, on what we've been doing got one video that's going to come out this week that's going to be the last installment of the pig farming series so be looking for that um, we're going to be diving into cuts and uh, what your product is going to look like when you when you get it back from the butcher and all that kind of stuff so be looking for that one but for this one we're out of here. So we appreciate you guys watching. If you hadn't done so, please go down and like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next video.